Okay, well, let me uh, thank the organizers for bringing us to this uh, amazing place uh, where we're uh, uh, celebrating one of the centenary um, milestones of uh, quantum field theory. I show on this slide uh, another one, which will occur uh, on the island of Helgoland in 2025. We know in quantum mechanics that the things depend on the observer, and I've discovered that wh when you think the centenary of quantum mechanics occurs depends on whether you're uh, French, German, or Austrian. Uh, so, <laughs> so you're all invited to uh, check this out, and the registration will open uh, next year. So uh, I'm going to talk about control of oscillators, uh, focusing on uh, superconducting microwave resonators for various uh, purposes, but uh, some of the ideas um, apply to and ha also have been borrowed from uh, ion traps and could also apply in uh, other areas like optical mechanics. So um, I'll just describe some high-level motivation for an architecture that you see in, in panel A on the left. There's a two-dimensional array of uh, superconducting uh, resonators, each of which has, let's say, a single microwave mode that we're interested in. Uh, each L each resonator is coupled by a controllable beam splitter that connects it to its neighbors. It works through uh, three or four wave mixing, so you can control the phase and rate of the beam splitting by applying microwave pulses. And then uh, each uh, resonator has a single superconducting qubit dispersively coupled to it. So this is a very flexible uh, hybrid continuous variable, discrete variable um, architecture, and you could abstract it into three different abstract machine models. One is qubit-centric, where the quantum information is in the qubits, and the communication and remote entanglement occurs uh, through the bosonic modes, which are the communication buses. Uh, in the middle uh, abstract machine model, it's bosonic centric. You might put bosonic quantum error correction codes to carry the information in the oscillators, and you would use the, the qubits then as auxiliary controllers to allow you to manipulate those bosonic code words. Or you could present to the compiler um, the full hybrid, the bare system, and in case you wanted to do simulations involving spins uh, or fermions coupled to uh, bosonic modes. And uh, this has some similarities to ion traps, which I, I show on the, in panel B, but there the individual spins or qubits are coupled to all of the modes and uh, you have a different way of uh, communicating entanglement uh, in, in the all-to-all -all conduct connectivity, but you don't have any control over the spectrum or dispersion of the uh, bosonic modes, uh, and uh, it, it's, uh, there may be some advantages in the scheme we're describing. There's, in terms of crosstalk, you're coupled only to a single oscillator, and then the oscillators can be controllably coupled to each other. So uh, in this brief talk, I don't have time to cover all of the things that are in this um, uh, paper in preparation that's over 125 pages long. I've got to somehow stop it from growing so I can get it uh, submitted. But I'm going to just illustrate for you some very simple concepts that, about control of this system. And the, the, the sort of message, which again, I don't have the time to go into detail, is that um, hybrid uh, architectures that contain both bosonic modes and qubits have a number of advantages for quantum error correction, for quantum simulation of physical models that actually contain bosons. And um, what I'd like to understand is how to make a sensible instruction set architecture for such a system 
and how to make human readable circuits that you can at least understand uh, uh, how the what the control is actually doing. And um, I won't present any, I'll present one very simple example leaving off all the error correction and lattice gauge simulations and things that are in the large paper. So the Hamiltonian you see in this equation, there's a single uh, bosonic mode, A, uh, there's a single qubit described by the sigma Z, and there's a dispersive coupling between them, which is uh, very strong. And if you add to this Hamiltonian drives on the qubit and on the cavity, you can convert that dispersive coupling into the interaction term V shown at the bottom, which is basically the ion trap uh, spin dependent forces uh, Hamiltonian. And that Hamiltonian uh, causes displacements of the oscillator in phase space whose sign depends on the state of the qubit. Uh, controlled by the Z, or if you do qubit rotations, controlled by the Pauli X or Y. And um, the, the, uh, this gives us universal control. There's a complete, just only need four uh, Lie group generators shown there. And by uh, combining gates based on these, you can uh, generate uh, the universal effective Hamiltonian for a single qubit coupled to a single oscillator that's shown uh, in the bottom equation. Uh, there's a polynomial in position and momentum of the oscillator, little h, and another uh, polynomial that's a vector of three polynomials dotted into the Pauli matrices. And that's the most general um, arbitrary Hamiltonian of polynomial form for this. Uh, so, uh, using this, um, what we call the echo control displacement gate that converts this dispersive coupling into this um, controlled uh, displacement of the oscillator in phase space, uh, combined with qubit rotations, you see the R phi of theta, uh, qubit rotations around some axis on the equator of the block sphere controlled by the angle phi, and um, uh, but rotates the spin through an angle theta by alternating uh, those and the echo control displacements uh, you can generate in principle uh, any uh, unitary that you want and also it turns out I'll skip the details but this echo control displacement allows you to do a complete state tomography via the characteristic function, by measuring the overlap of the oscillator state with a displaced version of itself and mapping that information back onto the qubit. Uh, so here are some examples of numerically optimized circuits. So you, you just alternate these rotations and control displacements and you adjust numerically, adjust the size of the displacements and the rotation angles uh, you can very, in very short depth circuits, uh, produce, for example, uh, Fox states whose characteristic functions, whose phase space portraits you see in the colorful pictures at the bottom for Fox states uh, one through five. It's not the Wigner function, it's the characteristic function, but they're very similar uh, looking. And you can produce these with circuit depths of uh, four to 10, uh, very, very efficiently. And this is work from uh, Alec Eichbusch and company in the Devere lab. Uh, here you see some more uh, states. On the lower left is the binomial quantum error correction, bosonic code word states. In the upper right, you see uh, more and more squeeze states, uh, very beautifully illustrated uh, in uh, this space based portrait. And in the lower right, you see um, the Gottesman Kataya Preskill quantum error correction code uh, states. And again, very shallow depths 
uh, circuit uh, managed to produce these uh, beautiful uh, phase-based distributions of rather complicated states. Uh, so these numerically optimized sequences are highly expressive, but they're completely incomprehensible. How is it that with just a few displacements and qubit rotations, you can uh, produce these? Uh, and so that's the, I wanna try to get some feel for how this gate set works, some intuition, and I'm going to do so um, uh, using uh, the language of quantum signal processing. Uh, and I refer you to this beautiful review article in, uh, from the Itron group. And the ideas of quantum signal processing are directly descended from robust control pulses and nuclear magnetic resonance. Um, and roughly speaking, the idea is I'm going to give you a unitary, in this case, uh, a rotation around the z-axis uh, by uh, an angle theta. And the z-axis is well defined, but the uh, rotation angle uh, the classical control parameter is uncertain. And given that unitary and the chance to apply it multiple times, uh, can you create from that a different unitary, e to the minus i, f of theta sigma z, where f is some specified polynomial function of the unknown classical control parameter. And this can be used to correct uh, errors in NMR from um, amplifier gain fluctuations or in ion traps, it's used uh, uh, to, to deal with uh, laser amplitude fluctuations. And I want to extend this idea of robust control uh, that's robust against fluctuations in classical control parameters to the control of quantum uh, oscillator qubit systems. And I'm going to illustrate the idea with deterministic creation of a cat state. So um, imagine, uh, so in the upper right, you see uh, the wave function of a harmonic oscillator um, uh, as a function of position. For us, the position is the electric field inside the cavity. And I'm going to put the auxiliary qubit in the X state, a superposition of up and down. And then I'm going to apply a controlled displacement by a distance alpha in position controlled by the Z value of the qubit. And that produces an entangled state between the qubit and the cavity. You see in the lower right picture, the qubit is up and the cavity is in coherent state plus alpha and it's superposed with the qubit being down and the qubit, uh, the oscillators in the state minus alpha. And what I'd like to produce is a cat state in which the uh, oscillator is in the superposition of those two coherent states, but the qubit is disentangled. So how, are we, how can we figure out a construction circuit that will do that? So to disentangle the ancilla from the cavity, you could do it by measurement, but I want to do it in a deterministic way. You have to do something very strange. If the position of the oscillator is positive, you have to rotate the qubit by plus pi over two around the y-axis. If the position of the oscillator is negative, you have to rotate the qubit by minus pi over two. How can I possibly do that? Uh, well, very surprisingly, uh, the answer is to apply a conditional momentum boost, this unitary U you see just on the left, that gives a momentum boost of plus K if the uh, Y component of the spin is plus and minus K if the Y component is minus. Well, you can reinterpret that momentum boost as saying, no, it's not a momentum boost of the oscillator dependent on the qubit. It's a rotation of the qubit around the y-axis by an angle that varies linearly with the, quant the position of the quantum oscillator. So now the rotation angle is a quantum object subject to quantum fluctuations. But if you choose the, the angle uh, the coefficient to be minus pi over two alpha times the position, 
then for the position plus alpha in the center of the right hand peak in the lower right, you see you get exactly the correct rotation angle. And if x is minus alpha, you get exactly the right rotation angle. But because x is quantum, you have quantum uncertainty in x. And so for uh, around that Gaussian peak, you get small over and under rotation. So it's not a perfect disentanglement, but it's actually pretty good, at least if alpha is large. Uh, the fidelity to the ideal cat state is uh, given in that expression in, in the blue plot. So, um, so that almost works, it works fairly well, but can we do better? And this is where the quantum signal processing comes in. So when Paris invented this BB190 NMR pulse sequence, which uh, allows you to take an imperfect 90 degree rotation and apply it multiple times around different axes and get a much better um, 90 degree rotation through this uh, composite pulse scheme. And here you see uh, uh, the BB190 on the right-hand side of that equation, R0 of theta, that's the approximate 90-degree rotation that you want. And then you put three more uh, rotations there by 180, 360, and 180 degrees around peculiarly chosen axes on the, on the block sphere. And any error that occurs in R0 is compensated by the errors that occur in the other three gates, uh, and you end up producing a, a very accurate pi over 2 rotation. You see in the graph, uh, as a function of the uh, rotation angle theta, you see the red curve is sine theta, and the blue curve is the sine of the rotation angle produced by the robust pulse. And you see it's very flat top. You get, it, even if there are large fluctuations in theta around pi over two, you still get a rotation very close to that. And so um, even though these are quantum fluctuations, uh, they're all x hat, so they all commute with each other. And the, you can just take over this classical robust uh, control sequence and uh, just uh, cancel out those small residual uh, entanglement between the spin and the um, and the cavity, therefore producing a, a uh, cat state whose fidelity for medium values of alpha is one to two orders of magnitude. The infidelity is one to two orders of magnitude smaller uh, than before. So it actually works. Now, uh, you can ask, uh, can I do even better? And the answer is yes. You can do something uh, that you could call non-abelium uh, quantum signal processing, because so far we only use uh, rotations uh, that involve the oscillator position x. But we could also do, so those are momentum boosts, we could also do controlled uh, displacements, which involve angles uh, to rotate the qubit that depend on the oscillator momentum. And now the two, neither the Pauli matrices nor the control angles commute with each other. And so you get a much richer uh, algebraic structure. And uh, you can replace that entire, uh, in BB190, that set of three additional rotations in the red box by a single very small uh, non-commuting uh, uh, displacement using P rather than X. And uh, the, the momentum boosts in the BB190 were large, and there were three of them, and the whole thing can now be simplified to a very small uh, additional rotation. So this is a hint uh, towards, a, we don't have a complete theory of this sort of non-abelian uh, quantum signal processing, but this is a hint towards a sort of powerful general generalization of this bosonic uh, quantum signal processing. And this idea, very similar to this, a little more complicated, we developed uh, and was used uh, for an autonomous error correction protocol that Michelle's group used in the GKP uh, code experiment that showed uh, 
uh, error correction memory gain of, of 2.3. So I'll end, you, end with open questions. Uh, benchmarking, uh, we're, we know about uh, randomized benchmarking for qubit uh, circuits using uh, random Clifford's. Gaussian operations are the analog of, of Clifford's, but the group is non-compact, so what should we do? Uh, we don't have a formal theory yet and convergence bounds for this non-abelian quantum signal processing idea. Uh, that needs to be formalized. And uh, we have now some intuition about how to build these circuits uh, without doing numerical optimization or some idea now of what the numerical optimization is doing. But we don't have a constructive unitary synthesis scheme um, that we can do uh, other than for a number of specific examples. So we'd like to expand that. And I'll stop there. Thank you.